Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Amen. And let us be under the cloud of the Holy Spirit in his mighty presence. Thanks to God and thanks to Pastor Viral and Sister Mrunal and the PBC Church for arranging these amazing, amazing services to learn and experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we praise you. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mighty presence. Thank you, Father God. Let us uh, hear the word of God. Let the power of God be upon everyone who are under the sphere of my voice, who are under the sphere of my uh, voice. Let the anointing be upon you right now. Acts Amen. chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. We'll be reading Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Mm. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Through the Holy Spirit, he gave the commandments to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of the things spread as pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, let the mighty anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit be felt by your people who have joined this meeting, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Whether they are in their homes or wherever they are under the voice of my speaking, Father God, let the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost be felt in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, let your mighty presence be experienced, Lord, in each and every home, in each and every heart, in each and every person right now in Jesus' name. The heavy anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you right now in Jesus' name. Be hungry right now. Lord, us, Lord make us hungry right now. More thirsty to receive of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for your awesome presence, your mighty power. Father God, we bless you, we praise you, we adore you, we honor you. Holy Spirit of God, speak to us. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your still small voice. We want to be ministered by the Holy Spirit this morning. Precious Jesus, minister to each one of us by the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit, Father God. Ignite the fire of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Father God, we surrender. We commit ourselves into your hands. Holy Spirit, minister unto us and bless your people by the mighty anointing and the power and the preaching and the prophetic words of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is a mighty anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit as we have been worshiping the Lord during the worship time. And uh, today you come with expectations, you see, to receive 
the Lord, to receive from the Lord, to receive from the Holy Ghost, expect to experience the mighty presence of the Lord. Expect to experience the mighty work of God and the mighty miracles of God. Be in, a, in an attitude of prayer during this whole service. You see, be in an attitude of becoming more and more thirsty, yes. of receiving from the Holy Spirit. Right now, I see a deck of cards, you see, deck of cards. And uh, there is someone who is very much addicted to gambling. Mm. And if you are under the sphere of my voice, you are addicted to the gambling and you are losing lots and lots of money in your life. But the Lord wants to deliver you. Amen. The Lord wants to deliver you right now. Mm. Just cry out to God right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we pray for this dear one who has been addicted by this gambling and he's addicted to something by which he or she is losing lots and lots of their finances and money and their money are being thrown into a, into a bag which has holes in it. Mm -hmm. And they are losing it right now in Jesus' name. Father God, I take authority over this dear one and I command to be delivered in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of gambling and the spirit that loves money. Be broken off this person right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now. Release and deliver this person right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, I see a big gate, a very huge gate that has been opened. During these times, you see these days, many, many people are repenting. People are crying out to God because of the situation of COVID-19 all over the world. And people are crying out to God, crying out and repenting of their sins. And so many people are being received into the kingdom of God. Amen. So my dear friend, if you are within the voice, under the sphere of my voice, then the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, now is the acceptable time. Amen. Now is the time of salvation. Amen. And so cry out unto God right now from your heart. If you are not born again, you are not saved, but you are under the sphere of my voice through this PBC ministry. Right now, I challenge you to cry out to God and say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I call out unto you. Jesus. Cleanse my heart, cleanse my life. Jesus, I receive you into my heart at this moment. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Right now, cry out unto God. And the Lord is receiving you through that big gate he has opened these days for receiving people crying out to him and repenting of their sins into the kingdom of God. And so you are welcome into the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. One more thing I see is a big uh, a lump, a lump of a big meat and a loaf of bread. And due to this COVID-19 situation, there are millions upon millions of daily wage workers you have lost your jobs. You have been laid off. The companies are not paying you. And you are starving. And your families are starving. But if you believe today, if you are under the sphere of my voice, and if you believe in Jesus and give your life to Jesus, cry out to Jesus, then Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the living water and he will supply all your needs. Just receive Jesus. 
Just believe in Jesus and he will provide for you. But you need to first accept Jesus, the bread of life. You need to first accept the living water of Jesus. And my dear friend, your life will not be the same. The Lord will provide for you. Even though if you do not have a job or you are on a tangent of losing everything, but the Lord will provide. That is what the Lord is showing right now in Jesus name. So Lord, I pray for this dear ones. There are millions of millions in India and across the world that are starving. Even many daily wage workers in the United States are starving. But due to this advanced country, the government is providing for them. But there are many third world countries, Father God. Lord, they are just literally starving, Father God. They do not have that daily prayer. Father God, we cry out for those starving people and those poor people. And Lord, we cry out for your mercy. May these people turn to Jesus, who is the living bread. Jesus, the bread of life and the living water. May they accept Jesus, who is the creator and maker and savior. And be saved and be provided from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more thing I'm seeing is uh, the washing of hands, you see. The washing of hands, the through the washing of hands, the Lord is showing that it is very important to wash your hearts and to wash your lives. It is very important for the cleansing of the hearts. You see, we are living in such days when the purification of the heart is very, very important. You see, purify your heart. When you wash your hands with soap and water, then you can see that your hands are clean, right? But what about your heart? Your heart, you cannot see it with your natural eyes. Only the Holy Spirit of God can purify your heart through the blood of Jesus. And so cry out to the Lord. Purify my heart, O oh Lord, through the blood of Jesus. You need a pure heart. Because the Bible declares, Bible declares, those who are pure in heart shall see God. Those who are pure in heart shall see God. And so my dear friends, these are the days when Jesus is coming soon. If you want to see Jesus, and if you want to go with Jesus, it is important that you purify your heart right now in Jesus' name. Right now. Cry out unto the Lord. Lord, purify my heart. Pray in your heart. Lord, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Wash me clean. Purify me, O Lord. Because you declared those who are pure in heart shall she go. see God. I want to see God. I want to see the Holy Spirit. I want to see the angels of God. I want to see Jesus. Purify me, Lord. And if you prayed this prayer, the Holy Ghost is purifying you right now. Today, we will continue to focus on the topic of baptism of the Holy Spirit. We will continue to focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is the head of the church. And as the head of the church, Jesus wants to impart you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the ministry of Jesus to baptize his believers into the baptism of the Spirit of God. And John the Baptist declared, you see in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, Matthew 3, 11, John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water for repentance. 
it was a what baptism of repentance the water baptism but he who is coming after me that is the one who is coming after me that is jesus he is mightier than i whose sandals i am not worthy to carry he will baptize you that is jesus who is the mighty one he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire he will baptize you with the holy spirit and the fire and so it is the jesus who baptizes you with the holy spirit and fire fire is the purification of your life and fire is to give you the power of god you see the fire purifies you and the fire of the holy spirit gives you the power and so my dear friends what is the purpose of the baptism in the holy spirit what is the purpose of the baptism in the holy spirit to receive the gift of power baptism of the holy spirit is to receive the power of god the holy spirit to receive the power of god and jesus said in acts chapter 1 verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power when the holy spirit is come upon you you shall receive power when the holy spirit is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth unto the uttermost parts of the earth you will be my witnesses when the holy spirit comes upon you you will receive power and so jesus declared that the baptism in the holy spirit is to receive the power of the spirit of god many believers try to live their christian life in human strength this is very very true many many christian believers try to live their christian life in human strength and it is a struggle it is difficult but many people even take pride that they are living their christian life in human strength but it is very difficult and it is a great struggle let me tell you let me give you an example you see back in india i had a 10 seater mahindra jeep and this 10 seater mahindra jeep was a big vehicle and we used to take it from village to village to do the crusades and preach the gospel and uh, this mahindra jeep was totally mechanical it did not have power windows it did not have power steering and i used to drive and when it is in motion then it is okay but when it is supposed to be parked in its proper place then i have to use my both hands you see to steer the jeep you see i have to use my strength human strength and roll the jeep and try to put it in the right place while parking it took so much human strength today now i have the jeep called grand cherokee limited here in united states in california grand cherokee limited the jeep the original jeep you see and this jeep has power steering power windows everything power you see so even when i have to park this grand cherokee you see i can just use my small finger and just turn the steering wheel just with one finger and put it and park it wherever i want it you see this is the big difference between that mahindra jeep i had back in india and the one that i have now the grand cherokee limited 
here in United States. It has a power steering, you see? It has power. My dear friends, that's the very reason why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit is come upon you, you will receive power, power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. You see when in Acts chapter 2, when all the disciples, 120 of them were in the upper room, and the Holy Ghost came upon them with the mighty rushing wind, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It literally changed their lives, you see. Then Peter stood up on that very same day, and he preached the word of God under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. And you know, in that very same day, how many were saved? 3,000, you see. 3,000 were added into the church because the word of God had gone in the power of the Holy Spirit and the disciples, all of them had become dynamic witnesses, powerful witnesses, very powerful. You know, when I got born again, this was a number of years ago, and as a born again and saved person, you see, I had a very strong desire to go and preach the gospel. And uh, at that time, I was just born again. And I was not baptized in the Holy Spirit, though I had the desire to share the gospel. And I joined uh, Operation Mobilization. And OM team, as people know in India, you see the Operation Mobilization of those days, I'm not talking about the OM team of right now. The OM team of those days, they went villages to villages, from towns to towns, and they distributed the so much gospel literature and preached in the streets and in the markets. I have preached so many times in the streets, in the markets with the OM. And even in those days, I played guitar and used to stand up in the markets and streets and sing and a crowd will gather and we will preach. But I never saw people getting saved. People getting born again. I never saw a single healing miracle, you see. No healing miracles. We kept on doing day after day after day for many months like this. But then a day came in my life when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, as Jesus promised, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. And then I began going from village to village, taking a team with me, in that Mahindra Jeep, and we went and preached in the markets, in the town squares, and people started getting saved in numbers, you see. So many miracles happening, and so many healing miracles, because now it was being done in the power of God, and not in the human strength. Not in the human strength. I really feel so sad about many, many Christian believers trying to live their Christian lives in the human strength. And many people take pride in that. People just take pride in their head knowledge. But my dear friends, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it. I did not say it. He said it in Acts 1 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so we need the power of the Holy Spirit. 
The baptism of the Holy Spirit is to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter 2, verses 16 to 18. The Apostle Peter, while preaching on the day of Pentecost, he is quoting Prophet Joel. And quoting from the book of Prophet Joel, he says, Acts chapter 2 and verse 16, this was so, this was said through Prophet Joel. You see, this was spoken through Prophet Joel. And in the last days, it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants. Whether they are men or women. In those days I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. See this is the right time. To seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the right time for you to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be very thirsty, very longing, very hungry to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Without that, no one can get it. Remember that. Jesus said it actually. We will go to those verses. And again, reading Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist declared, I baptize you with water of repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so it is the Jesus himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus himself commanded that his disciples to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and verse 5. Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. Very important. And while staying with them, that is the resurrected Lord Jesus, while staying with the disciples, he ordered them, he commanded them. He did not make a suggestion. See, suggestion is whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it, it's okay. But he ordered, he commanded not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. You see, in John 14, 16, Jesus had promised the disciples the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 16. He said, I will ask the Father, and he will send you the another comforter or the another helper, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to be with you and to be inside of you. And so he said, do not leave Jerusalem, do not depart from it, but wait for the promise of the Father, that is, wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Wait for the Holy Spirit. You see, the disciples were born again. They were saved. And yet, Jesus told them, and commanded them that you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even though you are saved. You still need it. You need it. But which he said, you heard from me. See, Jesus said you had already heard from me. That is in John chapter 14, 15, and 16. That you had already heard about the Holy Spirit from me. For John baptized with water. All these disciples were baptized 
in water by John the Baptist, actually. And they used to go to the Jordan River. And in the Jordan River, then John the Baptist will take a person and he will dip the person right into the waters of the Jordan. Deep completely down under the surface of the water. And that's how they were being baptized in the water. And Jesus said, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. You see, Jesus used this word. This word is baptism of the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. These are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. That you got to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, he said. You need to be. You see, Prophet Joel and John the Baptist and even Lord Jesus himself, they talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it is mentioned throughout the New Testament. And if Jesus thought it is so important for his disciples and his believers to be baptized of the Holy Spirit, then how much more important it is for you and for me to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Even today, it is so vital and so important for each one of us. And let us see, why did Jesus, why would Jesus place so much importance on the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Why? Why did Jesus place so much importance on the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because the first thing that salvation is like a veil. You see, Jesus said, getting saved, getting born again, salvation is like a well of water. While talking with the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, Jesus said that salvation is like a well of water. We read in John chapter 4 and verse 14. John chapter 4 verse 14. The water I shall give him while talking with the Samaritan woman. Jesus said the water that I shall give him or her shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus was talking about salvation with the Samaritan woman. And Jesus said the salvation is like a well of water that springs up until eternal life, you see. And so giving you eternal life is like a well of water. But then later on, Jesus talks about the rivers of the living water. But later on, Jesus speaks and talks about the rivers of the living water. We read in John 7, 37 and 39, again the words of Jesus. If anyone is thirsty, see what Jesus said? You got to be thirsty for this thing. You should be longing, you should be desiring, you should be wanting. If you... If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Verse 37, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Out and within from inside of that person will flow rivers of living water. Not one river. Jesus is talking about many rivers, many rivers will flow out of that person. And here, rivers of living water. And the Bible continues to say, but this spake he of the Holy Spirit, 
Here now Jesus was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is spoke about the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. See, rivers of the living water flows only after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not one river. Many rivers of blessings, many rivers of power of God, many rivers of miracles, many rivers of healings, and many rivers of being witnesses and people getting saved. Many rivers of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Rivers of the living water will flow after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so there is a difference between well and rivers. And they have a very different purpose also. You see, there is a huge difference between a well of water and rivers. Even in their purposes, a well can take care of your personal need, of your personal salvation. A well, a single well can take care of your personal need, of your personal salvation. But rivers can take care of the needs of multitudes of people. The rivers can take care of the needs of many, many masses of people. The baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you power to be the witnesses of Jesus in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That happens only by the rivers of the living water flowing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, my dear friends, you will become a blessing to many, many around you. If the rivers of living water and the power of the Holy Ghost are flowing through your life. And again, reading Matthew 3.11, you know, Jesus wants to baptize the believers, he said. John the Baptist declared, the one who is coming after me, he is mightier than me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Even in Acts 1.5, Jesus said, for John indeed baptized in water. John did baptize in water. But you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see the word... Greek word for baptism is baptizo. And baptizo means to immerse, means to deep in, to sink. Here in the church of God, we have like two baptism tanks. And whenever anyone wants to take the baptism, I take them to the baptism tank filled completely with water. And we both go down and I dip that person right into the water, you see. The person needs to be immersed and sinked into the water. Then only the baptism happens, you see. No part should be left out of the water, you see. Complete immersion. Completely need to be deep and to be sink into the water. My dear friends, only if a person desires to completely immerse himself or herself into the presence of the Holy Spirit, if anyone really thirsty, so hungry and so thirsty to immerse himself or herself totally in the Holy Ghost, then only the baptism of the Holy Spirit will take place, you see. And that's why Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. You got to be, the qualification required is, you got to be thirsty. Many, many Christian believers are not thirsty for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so 
they never experience it ever in their life. They are happy to live their Christian life in their human strength. And even there are people who teach, oh, it's okay. It's okay. But my dear friends, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Acts 1, 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to give believers the power to be witnesses. See, the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to give you the power to be the witnesses of Jesus. Powerful witnesses. And I've heard people say that the baptism in the Holy Spirit was only for the early church and not for today. However, Bible never says anywhere. I, I have read Bible again and again. I have never come across in the Bible that Bible saying anywhere that this is about the early church and the latter church. Never. There are no words like early church and latter church in the Bible. Jesus is the head of the church. And this is what he said about the church. Read Matthew 16, 17 to 19. In Matthew 16, 17 to 19, Jesus said, he would build his church. Jesus will build his church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. My dear friends, Jesus builds his church. Jesus baptizes his believers and disciples in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He never said, I built the early church. I built the latter church. I built the historical church. He never said that. Did he say that? No. You never find those words ever in the Bible. That the baptism of the Holy Spirit was only for the early church. No, not at all. He builds the church right from the beginning. Even in this 21st century. The church of the Lord continues to grow. Remember that. Even in this 21st century, the church of the Lord continues to grow and increase. And the Lord Jesus continues to impart, give the impartation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord continues to give. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and bestow upon those believers who believe it. The power of the Holy Spirit. We read that God did so many great things in the book of Acts. And he did mighty miracles. And even today, the Lord continues the Lord continues to perform miracles, casting out demons by power of the Holy Ghost, baptizing people in the Holy Spirit, and even raising the dead. Even raising the dead, you see. God is still doing it. The ministry of the book of Acts continues through those who are baptized. In the Holy Spirit. What they needed in those days. We still need it today. We still need it today. You see. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter 8. Philip was preaching in Samaria. In the city of Samaria. A great crusade was going on. In the city of Samaria. And people were listening intently. To his message that was being preached. And they were watching all the healing miracles that were taking place through the hands of Philip. And because of that, many people got saved. And many people were baptized in water. We read in Acts chapter 8 verse 12. 
Reading verse 12, Acts 8, 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. They believed the word of God and they were baptized in water, men and women, all of them. And we read in verses 14 to 17, Acts 8, 14 to 17. All these people who believed, got saved, were baptized in water to get saved, you see. And in 8, Acts 8, 14 and 17. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, People in Samaria had believed in the word of God being preached by Philip. And they were saved by the preaching of the word of God and the gospel. They sent the church in Jerusalem. They sent two apostles. They sent unto them Peter and John. Who when they had come down. Prayed for them, that is prayed for those who were saved and baptized in water. They, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. That they might receive the Holy Ghost. That is, they might be baptized in the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them. Then very important part. You see they were water baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. And they were saved. But now apostles Peter and John came. They laid their hands on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so my dear friends, the apostles came, laid their hands, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, those disciples in Samaria, I mean, those people who, be people who believed the word of God, got baptized in the water baptism, were automatically did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Did you see that? They automatically did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was only after Apostle Peter, the man who preached on the day of Pentecost, and Apostle John, they came and taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and declared to them the word of God then those saved people, the new believers got ready to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then through the Peter and John, they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so my dear friends, this is like a second separate experience. Second separate experience. They got saved, but then later on when the church of Jerusalem sent them, Apostle Peter and John, then they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, in those days, they either had to go by riding on donkeys or by walking. So I don't think they immediately reached that place, Peter and John. It took some number of days, you see, when they reached there and they taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how Jesus had put so much importance on getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then the people in Samaria believed it and got ready and they were thirsty and hungry to get baptized in the Holy Spirit and to obey the commandment of the Lord Jesus. And they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is again confirmed in the word of God. In Acts 19 verses 2 to 6. Acts chapter 19 
versus 2 to 6, x19 versus 2 to 6. This is confirmed again. When Paul visited Ephesus, when the Apostle Paul visited Ephesus and found believers there, he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That is, since you got saved, did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Apostle Paul is asking them to the people of Ephesus. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. They were taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit by Saint Paul. And then they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit came upon them. The Bible says. The Holy Spirit came upon them. Fulfilling what Jesus had said. In Acts 1 8, but when you but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They received the power and they spake in tongues and prophesied. And this is how the Ephesians were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so, my dear friends. When a person gets saved, does not automatically get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because at salvation, a person gets born again through the Holy Spirit and becomes a believer. But it is very necessary to become hungry and thirsty and to prepare yourself for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, when a person gets saved, at that time, they are like a baby Christians. They are baby Christians. And many, many times so happens, those baby Christians remain baby Christians for many years together. That is also what happens. And they live powerless Christian life. You see, powerless. They get up, they fall, they get up, they fall, they get up, they fall again and again into sin, you see. They just keep living as baby Christians. Until, you see, they want to be baptized of the Holy Spirit. Until they long to be baptized of the Holy Spirit. Until they prepare their hearts to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus will not give the baptism of the Holy Spirit if anyone is not wanting it, if anyone is not thirsty, if anyone is not prepared. Jesus will not give it. Why? Because he qualified it by saying, if you are thirsty, then you need to come to me. And he also said in Matthew 7, 6, you see, it is very holy, very, very holy. The power of the Holy Spirit is a very holy thing. He can not give it to you without you being responsible for it and you being prepared for it. Matthew 7, 6, Jesus said, give not that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is a very, very holy thing. Because it brings you the power of God. It brings you the power of the Holy Spirit. It brings you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so only to those responsible persons, only... Jesus, he looks at your heart. 
when he looks at a person's heart, a believer's heart, and when he knows that that person is truly, truly thirsty and hungry and prepared and ready to be responsible, use of the power of the Holy Ghost, and to be responsible, use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to be responsible for the miracle power of God, then only he will entrust it to you. Otherwise, if he sees that you cannot properly handle it, he doesn't want to give it. And that's why Jesus said in John 7, 37, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. You got to be very, very thirsty, very, very hungry, and you got to be prepared to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lastly, I'll read now Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 13. Luke 11, 9 to 13, again the words of Jesus. And I say unto you, ask, ask and it shall be given to you. You got to ask it. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If then, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You got to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you have to ask by faith. You got to have faith. Everything in the Bible is only through faith. And so by faith, you can be baptized of the Holy Spirit even right now and even today if you are hungry and ready and thirsty and prepared for it. And so right now we are going to go into that time of the impartation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, if you are really hungry and thirsty, close your eyes. Close your eyes and begin to pray. Forget everything that is around you. Just begin to focus on Jesus. Focus on the Holy Spirit. If you are in the sphere of my voice, under the sound of my voice, the presence of the Holy Spirit is upon you right now. Whether in your homes, wherever you are hearing me, you are under the sphere of my voice. If you are really thirsty, if you are really wanting, if you are really hungry, and if you want to responsibly handle the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, you got to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First, pray to Jesus. Lord Jesus, cleanse me and purify my heart with the blood of Jesus. Ask the Lord to purify your heart. With an unclean heart, the Holy Ghost baptism will not come upon you. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. If you try with your unclean heart, then a dangerous thing can happen to you. And so cry out to God, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. If God makes you to remember, your conscience brings, conscience brings to your memory any sin, just confess that sin and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sin. Purify my heart. Cleanse my heart. Begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. 
Lord, cleanse me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Purify my heart. Lord, make my heart clean. My mind clean. My thoughts clean. Clean me, Lord. Then secondly ask, Lord, purify my motives. Purify my motives. Lord, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with a correct motive, with the right motive. I want it according to your word, according to your promise. Lord, you promised me in your word. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and it shall be opened for you. Lord, you promised me. Do not leave this place without getting baptized of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, according to your promise, I believe your promise. Lord Jesus, I believe you. Lord Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, purify my motive. I ask you with the right motive to be your witnesses, to be your witness. I want to be a witness to save souls, to bring people into God's kingdom. I want to bring people into God's kingdom. I want to save souls. Lord, my motive is to save souls. My motive is to bring people into the kingdom of God. Lord, my motive is to be, be a blessing to many, many multitudes around me. Lord, I want to be a blessing to others. Lord, I want the reverse of the living water. Pray, Lord Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit right now. I believe your word. I'm hungry and thirsty, Lord. According to your promise and with the right motive and with a pure heart and a pure mind, Lord, baptize me right now in your Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Ghost is giving you some sounds, begin to utter those sounds, speak those sounds, utter those sounds, speak the prayer language. This is the first gift the Holy Spirit will begin to release from your mouth only by faith. You will not understand those sounds coming to your mind and in your heart. But you have to believe by faith that they are coming to you from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 The anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be covered with the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the cloud of the Holy Ghost is upon you right now, hallelujah, hallelujah, the mighty presence of God, touch, touch them right now in Jesus name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Holy Spirit, 
send the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you, the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Be covered with the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the touch of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. Be baptized of the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, call upon the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Read the heavy anointing and the touch of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Touch, Lord, touch right now. Let the power of God fall, fall right now. Holy Spirit, fall upon them. Those who are hungry and thirsty and willing and wanting and longing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, minister unto them, Jesus, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, fully immerse them in the Holy Ghost, fully in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Immerse them, soak them, soak them, Lord, totally and completely in the Holy Spirit. Touch, touch right now. The Holy Spirit anointing covering is upon you right now. Begin to seek the Spirit of God in a deeper way. Get deeper into the Holy Ghost right now. Just keep crying out for the presence of the Holy Spirit and the mighty unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon you right now. I send the unction and the covering of the Holy Spirit upon you to cover you right now. Hallelujah. Begin praising and worshiping the Lord and even uttering those sounds that the Holy Spirit is giving you right now by faith. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let the living streams of water, let it flow through you. Let it flow through your mouth. Let it flow out of you right now. The Lord is blessing you with the prayer language right now. You will not understand it, but allow the Holy Spirit to take over you. Allow him, say, Holy Spirit, take over my life. Take over my heart. Take over my tongue. Take over my mouth. Holy Spirit, take over me. I surrender to you. I surrender myself to you fully and completely, Lord. Make a full surrender of yourself to the Holy Spirit. And my dear friends, when you make that full surrender, all to Jesus I surrender, you will experience mighty power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If your body is trembling, let it tremble under the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Prepare yourself more and more. Let the Lord see the preparation of your heart. He will not give the holy thing unless you are responsible to handle it. Hallelujah. Receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Receive it. 
Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, mighty God. We give you all the glory. We honor you, Lord. Thank you for the touch of the Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you for the word of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching many people under the sphere of my voice through this technology in the nations around the world. And even after this service, through the recordings, Lord, you are going to touch many and continue to touch many, continue to baptize many in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. We praise you, we bless you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory, we honor you, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. And I'll ask Pastor Viral to continue. Continue on under the anointing and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us remain in the presence of the Holy Spirit. It has not lifted. Let me tell you the lift. Holy Ghost has not lifted. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And Lord, as we come home, my Lord, according to your word, oh, my Lord. Lord, we seek your presence, oh, my Lord. We are thirsty for your presence, oh, my Lord. We are thirsty for your touch, Lord. We are thirsty for the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now, my Lord. And Lord, right now there are many hearts who are listening, oh my Lord. They are crying out to you, Father God. And Lord, 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 hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name, oh my Lord, hallelujah. They're asking the touch and the move of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit fall upon them heavily, Father God. Let them be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Let the utterance be given to them, oh my Lord. Allow, Lord, Lord, Lord. 